Hello everyone, let's look at those two factoring problems here. We have this 6x plus 10 and then uh, the other one is 6x squared plus 10x. And so you can see the similarity between the two because they uh, both turns have the same coefficient except that now this one only has an x here and then that one has an x squared and then the 10 has an x attached to it. So now I just want to put down two basic examples here just to, just to show you the comparison on how they're uh, factor. And because this is a linear expression, so all we can do is to check whether there is a greatest common factor, what we call a GCF, and see if we can factor out that. And this one also, it's um, we can factor a GCF from here, and there is no other techniques that we need to use to factor this expression. So this can be done really quickly. And so how do we do this first one? This, this first one is 6x plus 10. And so now all we need to think about is to think about what numbers that uh, will go into the 6 and 10 at the same time. And we want to find the largest such integer that will do that. And so you can see that both are even numbers. So we'll say that 2 goes into both 6 and 10. And then we may want to check whether there was a larger number for that. And so um, the next number would be 6 that goes into 6 because 4 does not go into 6, but 6 goes into 6, but 6 does not go into 10. So we cannot really um, use 6. So we conclude that 2 is the largest common factor for the 6x and the 10. So all we need to do now is to pull out the 2 from both turns. And so what do we get here? We are going to get we are going to get a 2 in the front. And then now we, we start putting, um, we, we put an open parentheses right here just to to show what's left after we factor out the two. And so now how do we figure out the answer here? We need to think about what times two will give you the six X. And so that should be um, easy to figure out. So something times two gives you the six and that something must be the number three. So we get the three here. And then because we didn't do anything to the X so we still got to keep the X attached to the three. So we have three X right here. And then now uh, there was a plus sign. So make sure that we put the plus sign. So don't forget to put the plus sign. So the sign will stay. And then now we need to think about what number times two will give us 10. And so that number should be five. And then now we close the parentheses. And as you can see here, there are still two turns inside this, this pair of parentheses because we originally had two turns. So when we factor out a GCF, we should still be getting the same amount of turns. So in this case, it will be two turns. And actually, you can see that there is no more stuff that we can pull out from the 3x and the 5. And so we're, we're finished with the factoring. So we factor out the greatest common factor, 2. OK, now let's look at this one. This one is almost the same thing as that one. Uh, we already know that we can factor out the 2 from both the 6 and the 10, but when we look at the x square and this x right here, we actually realize that, okay, so we can factor out an x from both the x square and the x. We actually cannot factor out the x square in this case because we're in this. if we do factor out the x square, there is not enough uh, copies of the x that will allow us to do that. So we can only factor a maximum of just one copy of x. And so let's do that. So our GCF for this problem would be 2x. OK, so now we open parentheses. And then now we need to figure out what's what's in here. Um, something times 2 gives us the 6. Uh, as you can see from the previous problem, we actually get the 3 here. So we can just simply put down 3. and. Now, something times x will give us the x squared. So that should be simple. We just need another copy of the x to get x squared. So we get 3x. It's the leftover stuff. And then now the plus sign. And then what else do we need to put here? Something times 2 will give us the 10, right? So we have the 5 here. And as you can see here, we already factor out the x. And so there is no more x that's left because there was only one copy of the x in the original problem. So now we can close the parentheses. OK, so um, usually when we do the, uh, the factoring, the greatest common factor, uh, after we finish doing the factoring, we should do a quick check to make sure that our factoring is correct. How do we do it? So we can we don't need to actually write down anything. We can just just look at it, right? So two times three, we get six, and then x times x will give us the x squared. So basically, we are just distributing to check whether our answer is correct. And then the next turn is the two x times five, right? Two x times positive five will give us positive ten 
x. And then so we know that our answer is correct. And then we can check the same thing for this problem. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, if you feel that this is too simple, because I just start from uh, the most basic ones, I'm going to talk about the more advanced ones later on. So if you feel that this is too simple, you can skip this one and then move on to the later one. Okay, so that's it for this two problems. So thank you for watching. See you next time.